Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 2 for December the 13th, 2020. We're still in Unit 1 entitled The Beginning of a Call. And our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is entitled Call to Participate in a Promise. Our devotion reading is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 42 uh, verses 1 through 9. Our background scripture is taken from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 25. That is our print passage today uh, where our lesson text will uh, uh, be taught from. Uh, our key verse reads, Joseph son of David do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins that is taken from Matthew chapter 1 uh, verse 20b and also verse 21 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today number one is to remember the story of the angels announcement to Joseph of Jesus birth. Secondly to rejoice that the birth of Jesus fulfilled God's promise to be with his people and thirdly to live with greater awareness of God's abiding presence we have two outlines that will be a part of our lesson today. Uh, the first outline is entitled Destined to Save from Birth and then our second outline is entitled Destined to Be With Us from Birth. And so again we are certainly thanking and praising God for this yet uh, another privilege and opportunity to be able to share our lesson with you today and we hope that you are uh, continuing to follow along with us uh, in your reading and in your study. Uh, we hope to be able to edify you through God's Word and we hope that you are staying um, vigilant in terms of uh, following all of the guidelines as we continue in this pandemic. We're certainly praying for uh, all of the families and certainly the first line responders and uh, keeping our country in prayer today is very important as the saints of God uh, move to the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we uh, be ready um, uh, for that event at that advent and be mindful of the fact that uh, Christ is still um, set to come uh, as we engage this lesson today, I want you to uh, prepare your um, yourself for uh, uh, certainly taking some notes, and we want to be able to engage you in Scripture. We hope you will follow along with us today. Uh, this is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart uh, in terms of uh, what it means to be called uh, to participate in a promise and. We hope that uh, those of us that understand that and we're going to unpack that for you today uh, in a way that we might be able to appreciate what it means to be called. Uh, certainly we understand Jesus' role, uh, but as we look at Joseph today uh, and as we look at Mary and even closer as we look at our own lives, um, uh, we have heard that term. Uh, being called and uh, many times um, we are not able to grasp what that, what that means uh, but it, it sets the tone uh, when God calls us it sets the tone for our lives and so as we engage in this lesson today we hope that you will think about um, looking at your own life I want to touch on uh, just a couple of points about what that term uh, to be called or calling uh, implies. It can be an invitation. 
it can be a summons, it can be a commission, or it could be uh, just naming. Uh, there are some uh, five uses of uh, that word call that appear in the in the Old Testament. Just wanted to uh, put you on a path of uh, of your own personal study uh, into seeking out what this means. Uh, and we find these same or similar uses of that word calling uh, in the New Testament. But just so we understand, uh, the, the New Testament refers to the Christian life as a calling. Uh, I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9, uh, Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1, and also 2 Peter um, chapter 1 verse 10. The basic call is to Christ as Lord, or this would be the general call. Uh, is to Christ as Lord and Savior. Thus all Christians uh, we are called ones. Uh, so it is employed in a comprehensive way to depict what has happened to those who through the Father's uh, love are now called children of God. I also want you to look at uh, the first epistle of John chapter uh, 3 uh, verse 1. Uh, however, there are further callings to special ministries. Uh, and I want you to look at Acts chapter 13, um, verse 2. Just setting the tone so we understand when we use that term, and even as we engage in this lesson today, you will be able to see how the Spirit of God is using uh, 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 this term. Uh, to be called and what it means and, and how it set the tone uh, in Joseph's life and uh, this is when that human meets the divine if you will and, and many times we struggle with, with that word call because we're trying to unpack what exactly does that mean when we say or we hear the term that we have been called uh, and I hope that we all as as believers that we have accepted the general call as we outlined or the basic call uh, to salvation that that is that is key uh, in understanding uh, this term call and it's also key in understanding uh, what we can expect the Lord to do in 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 furthering our, uh, in our walk with him but that basic one uh, needs to be addressed. I want to just touch on just a little bit of the biblical context and we're going to get uh, right into our lesson uh, text for this uh, for this lesson. But Joseph sought to keep Mary's surprising pregnancy private as he was unwilling to expose her uh, to public shame. Ironically Mary's son Jesus would uh, publicly shamed the great and powerful by triumphing over them uh, in his crucifixion and resurrection. I want you to look at Colossians chapter 2 uh, verse 15. But this public shame came amid Jesus' skillful handling of the direct verbal attacks by Pharisees and Sadducees and he often left them silenced uh, in the midst uh, of the crowds. I want to stop right there, but I just want to set the tone uh, that that uh, where we're going in this lesson. Uh, and it's also important to understand that the name Jesus means Yahweh saves. Uh, uh, when we say the name Jesus, we are literally speaking of God's salvation. Uh, more than a savior, he is our salvation. We need to remember that. He is our salvation. He is our hope. Uh, he is the nucleus of everything that we expect, uh, that we hope for even now and even into the future. But, but we want to look at uh, um, uh, Joseph and Mary's account. And, and, and you, we have seen this multiple times, but 
many times uh, uh, when we look at this this calling and, and, and we're going to see some of the classic mistakes uh, that uh, obviously Joseph made but that we make in terms of uh, that that divine meeting that human concept or mindset when we say that we have been called uh, but I was struck uh, with this lesson in terms of uh, uh, and perhaps we will deal with that just a little bit uh, from the introduction of this lesson because it set uh, uh, some points that I think that we need to uh, visit and revisit. But let's begin uh, in our first outline, Destined to Save from Birth. This is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 1, verses 18 through 21. And I want to read this from the NIV translation. Now this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Verse 19. Because Joseph her husband was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace uh, he had in mind to divorce her quietly verse 20 but after he had considered this an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said Joseph son of David do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit Verse 21, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. There is a lot of discussion I'm sure that you all have heard as I have over the years in terms of this context, in terms of this outline of how uh, 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 the Lord chose to use Joseph and Mary. Uh, keep in mind God can use any individual that he chooses to use. Uh, uh, but this virgin uh, uh, had been selected by God to be the carrier of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know we started back uh, uh, last week's lesson in the beginning of Matthew talking about the genealogy uh, and how Christ came to be. I hope that you would read that and I hope that you would see how God uh, through generations chose uh, uh, ultimately Mary uh, 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 to to be the uh, bearer if you will of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and so they have been called these two individuals Joseph and Mary they have been called to participate uh, in the in the uh, uh, salvation process if you will of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into the coming uh, 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 into this world and, and 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 there are a lot of discussions about how this could not be uh, uh, but I want us to understand that in order for us to really appreciate uh, uh, Matthew's gospel and, and what I love about the gospel of Matthew he uh, uh, knows and has used the Old Testament as his theology this is nothing but the fulfillment of what had been prophesied in the Old Testament and so Matthew uh, uh, leads us to see the fulfilling if you will of God's spoken word uh, through the prophets as God rolls out his purposes uh, uh, in this world uh, and so we can see that God has chosen human instruments uh, and so there are some uh, issues about this I, I, I understand that but all calls uh, uh, if you will uh, particularly where God is involved they are done in the spirit uh, uh, these things have been prophesied these things have been announced by God uh, uh, and so when we get to uh, the end of the uh, Old Testament even into Malachi we 
we are sort of left to see how God is going to unfold everything that he has prophesied uh, uh, through his prophets that things that will take place. And so we are able to see through the Old Testament uh, uh, a lens that God had always intended to save his people. Uh, that has been his character throughout uh, 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 the Old Testament. Uh, and so God saw fit to uh, uh, continue those prophecies until they reached a fulfillment. And this is where Matthew uh, uh, picks up this Old Testament uh, 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 framework, if you will, laying out the genealogy and bringing us right up to the doorstep of Joseph and Mary being involved in this. And so, uh, and, and, and as we see, uh, how this thing unfolded uh, Mary has been chosen and here these two individuals want to be married but now Mary is found to be uh, a pregnant with child before uh, her and Joseph have come together uh, 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 and so this is an issue uh, you can expect you can you can uh, uh, be assured that that would uh, 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 lend itself to be problematic for any individual who looked at a woman who was pregnant and not knowing uh, and certainly understanding that it, it, it was not him he had not uh, uh, been with her so how did this thing uh, uh, come about and so uh, he was going to uh, uh, intervene uh, and do something that uh, even though he did not have all of the answers uh, uh, Joseph had it in his mind to settle it in his own intellect. I'm trying to share something with you about being called. Uh, and I'm trying to help us to understand that there are many things that God is doing in our lives in terms of, of this calling uh, uh, that we don't, we don't understand. And I'm glad that uh, 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 that uh, God intervened uh, in a way in our first outline here to unpack uh, uh, for Joseph what is going on. Uh, and so we need this revelation in terms of this call. We need to, and, 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 and that's what I meant earlier, and I'm going to share something with you that you have seen uh, many times. This is in the book of Jeremiah, and I want to go there. Uh, very quickly to the very first chapter of the book of Jeremiah and I want to look at um, uh, verse 4 and verse 5 Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 and 5 this is his calling uh, 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 but the Bible said then the word of the Lord came to me saying before I formed you in the womb I knew you and before you were born I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet to the nations before right before uh, uh, before this prophet uh, uh, is is going to prophesy God had already moved uh, uh, God had already intervened God is letting him know before long before you were thought of, long before you entered into the womb, I had already decided. And so we can see this activity uh, in the life of Mary. Uh, uh, and, and we can see the issue uh, that Joseph is having here, but God is laying out the case here uh, to help this man understand that I'm working in Mary. Uh, I'm also working in you. Uh, although you don't understand what I'm doing, I'm instructing you that I'm at the helm. And I think this is very important uh, for us to understand uh, how God works. I also want to take you to Matthew chapter 9. Because this is all... Uh, uh, involved in in these callings and and how God works, how He uses us 
uh, in ways uh, sometimes that that is beyond our comprehension and this is why so many people are struggling uh, with this birth uh, 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 of, of this Christ child uh, with Mary uh, that it, it, it just doesn't uh, 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 stand to reason how this thing could happen without Joseph and I believe I believe the biblical content I believe the biblical context uh, and so but if you look at uh, Matthew just a little bit uh, 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 if you will uh, and I want to share this with you and I know that you have seen this uh, many times and as we look at the compassion of Jesus in Matthew chapter 9 at verse 35 we'll start there then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people but when the multitudes when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having uh, uh, no shepherd verse 37 then he said to his uh, disciples the harvest truly is plentiful plentiful but the laborers or few. Look at verse 38. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And it's important to understand uh, uh, how this thing works. Jesus does not yet command his disciples to go into the harvest as laborers but to pray to God to send workers. No one can do the work of harvest without being called to it and equipped for it by God. So as I said earlier these calls are done in the spirit uh, and so it's clear to me that in order for us to be called uh, God has to be involved. And, 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 and for us to understand how God wants to use us, we need a revelation. Otherwise, we are going to make mistakes. We are going to make uh, a, a serious mistakes if we don't understand. And Joseph, uh, uh, in his humanness, was going to make a classical mistake. He was going to intervene into something that he didn't understand. Uh, uh, but... I want to read this uh, uh, as I said earlier from this introduction it talks about God operates his kingdom by the work and labor of those whom he has gifted and assigned to serve when God gives you a particular gift great or small he expects that you would use uh, that gift to serve and bless others to advance the purpose of his kingdom to obey his commands uh, and to fulfill his divine purpose and to bring glory to his name whether in or outside the church so as we look at Joseph's life here and as he has been called uh, to participate in this thing uh, there are some things that that God expects and how uh, I, I like how this is framed here it said God operates his kingdom by the work and labor of those whom he has gifted and assigned and so uh, 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 Joseph's role in this however small or however large it might be uh, 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 he has a particular role to cooperate or to participate in this promise in this in this gift in this uh, 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 issue if you will and so uh, it's important God never told him to put Mary away uh, privately uh, that was a noble act that he wanted to comply with the uh, uh, the legal uh, system of his day nevertheless God is 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 looking for uh, our cooperation or Joseph's uh, participation through obedience don't do this but do this and so and this is how this things this thing works and so this is God's uh, expectation 
that we would be a blessing, that we would use the things that God has given us to do or the gifts that God has given us to do uh, uh, to be a blessing. I hope that this is making sense uh, uh, to many of us today who say that we have been called. And I would ask you, uh, what have you been called to do? And have you answered uh, the basic call as we have shared with you earlier? But it, it, it goes on to talk about here in this introduction of this lesson uh, that God uses ordinary people to fulfill his promise and plan for their generation sometimes with good intention pay attention to this sometimes with good intention we aspire to do to do things that are beyond the scope of God's call some people may want to teach or lead uh, for example when God has not called or anointed them to the task God does not look for ambitious volunteers. God always knows exactly what he needs for any given task. And I, I, I just, you know, I, I looked at that and I, I said, wow, this is, this is something that we really need to know. This is something that we really need to appreciate in our culture today. Because uh, I, I hope that we are acting uh, under the call of salvation what that encompasses for our lives, how that sets the tone uh, uh, for our lives uh, uh, going forward. What does it mean when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and, and how does that shape the rest of our lives? And so uh, we need to understand these things. And so uh, 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 if we want or if we believe God has called us to do other things uh, or, or to engage in other types of ministry aspects it's important that we have answered that basic call uh, unto salvation but I think that uh, this is something that uh, we need to understand this is God's kingdom this is God's work uh, this is God's son uh, uh, Mary and Joseph belong to God uh, he can use them uh, however he chooses to use them and so this is without question uh, very basic to the Christian uh, uh, concept of what we need to, to understand. And they are given specific information. Joseph is being given uh, specific information. Uh, if you look at verse 20 of Matthew chapter 1, and then we're going to get into this second outline. Uh, uh, God knew that what Joseph was thinking was the wrong thing. What he was about to do was the wrong thing. The path that he was choosing to take in terms of his relationship with Mary was going to go in the wrong direction. And God corrected him. God corrected him in his sleep. God corrected him through a dream. God changed the course of his life through a revelation because this was not a part of God's plan was to separate these individuals these two individuals but to keep them together uh, because the journey is not complete right the, the, the assignment is not complete and so God explains it to him in his sleep uh, and puts it on his level in a way uh, 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 that he can understand uh, uh, and he considered this in his mind and in his heart we're not told if he told anybody but God knew this was in his spirit to do to put Mary away and the Lord appeared to him to settle him down to tell him I'm working in Mary she didn't do anything wrong she hasn't been with anyone else everything is still okay I want you to know that what is going on in her is of the Holy Spirit I want you to look at 1st Corinthians chapter 12 if you have time we won't have a t opportunity obviously to get there today but I want you to look at how central the Holy Spirit is in our lives today uh, and how he moves us uh, and how he gifts us according to the will of God uh, and it goes on to uh, the, the this vision 
this dream that Joseph had, God calls him by name and tells him, don't be afraid, right? Calm down. Don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. I love this about God in terms of calming us down and helping us to understand the basics of 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 his uh, divine intervention in our lives and how he wants us to move uh, and, and God gives him some instructions uh, in verse 21 and this is where that obedience kicks in now now God has already explained to him that nothing's wrong don't be afraid this is what's happening but this is how he, uh, uh, God wanted Joseph to participate. Uh, uh, it says, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. So now Joseph gets a broader understanding that it's not about him, that it's not about Mary, but it's about God's work, it's about God's people, uh, I know Matthew is a Jewish uh, gospel, but if you look back over into the Old Testament, in particular uh, Isaiah chapter 42, uh, verse 1 through 9 is our devotional reading. But we can see God had already intended and uh, prophesied that he wanted to save other nations or other races of people outside of the nation of Israel. And so we have to understand that a call... Uh, is so complex in terms of uh, how we are to touch one another's lives and if God doesn't explain that to us we won't be able to grasp so I you know I don't want us to be offended by the fact that it's not about you it's not about who you think you are it's not about uh, what your title is it's about the people of God God had a mission to use these two people and he is letting Joseph uh, uh, know in this dream that this baby, this son that your uh, 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 wife is carrying or your potential wife is carrying here, uh, uh, he is coming to do something that you don't understand. He is coming to address something uh, that you cannot address. He is coming to deal with something that, that is going to uh, 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 open up the opportunity for people to come to me. Uh, all races of people, all uh, uh, groups of people can come to me and he wants to save them from their sins. Uh, you know, we don't understand sometimes that sin is a binding factor. It consumes uh, individuals. Uh, while we are looking at them, sin swallows us whole. And so God is concerned about uh, uh, people uh, from the inside out. God is concerned about uh, our lifestyles. God is concerned about uh, your thinking and your attitude about what you think you need and what you think you understand. God is concerned about the direction of his people and this baby is coming to address the core problem of humanity which is sin. We have heart problems, we have mind problems, we have spiritual issues that need to be addressed by a savior who is capable and so uh, uh, God wants to use these two people uh, in this process here, uh, uh, but he has to correct. And so I, I, I just want us to understand that, that we have to appreciate our callings. When God saved you, uh, 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 it didn't mean that you were better than anyone else. Uh, uh, God is now through his salvation of our lives is bringing a better quality out of us that we might be a blessing for other people that somebody might ask us one day what must I do to be saved I hope you can appreciate this but but considering Joseph and what he uh, 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 wanted to do in this mistake that he was going to make 
uh, because of his devotion to God and respect for the law, uh, Joseph contemplated the best way uh, 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 to end the marriage in a quiet, discreet manner. This internal conflict is a reality for those who live in a culture whose laws do not always fit God's plan, his purposes, uh, and process. But this was a serious matter. The penalty for adultery under the law of Moses was death. I want you to look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22, uh, verses 23 and 24. Joseph pondered the best course of action, right? He was thinking about how to handle this thing and the angel of the Lord appeared to him telling him to proceed with the marriage without fear and explaining that Mary's child was conceived by the Holy Spirit. You can always thank God for his corrective action that he has given us a path and sometimes when we uh, think about veering off that path God comes and he redirects us so we can continue to fulfill the purposes by which he have called us. Question here, has, has God ever called you to do something that challenged traditional norms and popular opinion? Absolutely. Absolutely. He always puts us in a position uh, where we can be a blessing, but it is a challenging thing uh, when we have to give an account of what we're doing. Uh, to others who have not had the revelation that we have had. It doesn't say anybody else here uh, in this vision uh, 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 who really understand. God uh, uh, appears specifically to Joseph. And so sometimes you can't always explain your revelation to someone else. It's not always advantageous for us to try to get others' opinion of what God wants us to do. He told you to do it. He explained it to you. He revealed it to you. And, 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 and it, it serves the purpose that, that we should be about our Father's business. I hope that makes sense to you today. But that, as I said, this is a, a beautiful illustration of how and what it means to be called in some of the issues uh, surrounding us being called. Second outline, destined to be with us from birth. This is taken from Matthew chapter 1 verses uh, 22 through 25 and again from the NIV translation. The Bible says all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Uh, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Verse 24, when Joseph woke up, catch this, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Isn't that beautiful to understand? He did what the Lord told him to do. This is essential in callings. Uh, we are called for specific reasons, uh, for specific purposes, uh, for a specific time frame. Uh, uh, we are just pieces of a puzzle, if you will, in God's plan, in God's kingdom. Uh, uh, God equips us with the messages, with the anointings, with the power, uh, with what we need to get the job done. We serve the capacity of that call. And then, and once our roles uh, are complete, and it's interesting, we don't get any more in the New Testament about Joseph's life other than right here. Uh, uh, in, in Matthew, we don't hear about him doing anything else. Uh, in the, I would argue with you today the reason why we don't see any more about him is because he had fulfilled his purpose. right? If there had been other places in the New Testament for Joseph to appear, God would have asserted him. Uh, but it goes on uh, to understand, help us to understand all this, all of this, this event in, this, uh, uh, in Mary's life, all this took place because God said it in the Old Testament. God prophesied that he would bring uh, 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 this son into the world. Uh, 
but we don't we don't get who the participants are right until we get to Matthew we get to Luke if you will uh, who who unpack these things for us uh, uh, but God was on the path of fulfilling what he said early on and and I hope that we understand and I want to encourage us today that whatever God has given you to do hear me good whatever God has given you to do you will complete that task it was not that there was not any other conflict in the Old Testament uh, with Israel particularly uh, uh, as it relates to this passage uh, uh, that sure Israel went through many other uh, uh, exchanges and, and disappointments if you will defeat but the purpose that God laid out in Isaiah would come to pass and that's very important everything that God told you in your life that he would do as I shared with you in the book of Jeremiah before you came into this world God had already decided right uh, before you thought about giving your life to Christ, God already knew that you was, right? Before you started serving in ministry and before you started doing all these things that that you're doing, God already knew and God already uh, uh, ordained, God already anointed that situation. And so you will continue to fulfill, right, uh, uh, the purposes of God. You will not die until you do what the Lord has given you to do. If God has spoken a word into your life, you're going to fulfill that word, uh, 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 that purpose before you leave this earth. I want you to look at Luke chapter 2. Look at Simeon, right? The Lord specifically told him, you will not die until you have seen the Lord's Christ. So we have a mission. We are on a mission. We have been commissioned. We are fulfilling a purpose. We are, uh, have been given divine assignments, right, by God to do what he has called us to do. And those things will be done. If, 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 if that's not the case, then we make God out to be a lie, right? So, so we know uh, before uh, 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 we came into this world, God had already ordained you to do and to go and to be a blessing. All right? And so these individuals here, it, it was not the fact that Mary and Joseph did not have opposition. They had a lot of conflict right, in their lives. They didn't have a lot of resources. right? We know that their culture was, was compromised. Nevertheless, God brought these two individuals into our understanding and have given us these things in scripture that we might appreciate the fact that he was going to use them no matter what. This prophecy uh, is birthed in Isaiah chapter 7 uh, verse 14. We know that quite well. But God has planted a gift within each of us the moment we realize the presence of God's gift is when we must move by faith to understand understand and share the gift with others Joseph and Mary understood early that Jesus was born for a purpose that was greater than the family life and identity that Joseph could provide Joseph received Jesus as his own earthly child through public dedication at the temple. But Joseph and Mary both knew that Jesus was not just their child, but God's own son, a gift of salvation to the world. I hope, trust, and pray that I have given you something to think about. Um, I hope to trust and pray that you understand a little bit better about what it means to be called. I hope you will seek it out, uh, the purposes by which God have called you. And so uh, as we seek to close here, there was a question I wanted to share 
Uh, have you ever refused to complete a spiritual task because you focused on your own ability rather than trusting God's presence with you? I think we all have been there. I think we've all tried to do things in our own strength. Um, we didn't feel like we were adequate, right? We felt we felt like uh, we wouldn't be received um, uh, as any person of God with any any merit, any status. But I want you to be assured of the fact that if God is involved, <laughs> you will be equipped. You will be empowered. You will be anointed to do the things that God have called you to do. And they will be, uh, 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 perhaps in someone's eyes, they may not be successful. But we are doing things for God's glory, for his honor, and for his praise. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you for the power of your word. Father, we thank you for this lesson just being unfolded for us in a way that we can appreciate what it means to be called and we can see that uh, callings on our lives bring particular issues for us all as we uh, that humanness uh, engages with the divine and we we struggle back and forth with you because uh, we believe that we won't be able to do the things that you have called us to do but but we pray now oh God over the confidence of the mindset of your people today that those that have been called to, uh, to be saved and that you have given them things to do, that they would do the things that you have called them to do to your praise, glory, and honor. And help us to remember that it's, it's not about us. It never has been and never will be, but it is all about Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for every ear that is listening today. We thank you for families today. We continue to lift one another in prayer today because as we see the day drawing near, we realize that, that the enemy is is ever present but your power has never left us alone we thank you for keeping us oh god even in this pandemic and we're mindful to continue to keep praying for those who are sick and who are quarantined and those who are on the front lines who are putting their lives on the line that they might help others we we pray for this country we pray for the leadership right now you know all about our doings today help us to find the purposes and the things that you have called us to do help us to be about our father's business help us O oh God, to be a blessing to those who need to accept this general call today. There are many who have not called Jesus as Lord and Savior, but we are praying today that you would save to the uttermost, that you would bring us to the knowledge of the truth, that you would help us to understand that Jesus came into this world and he died. He shed his blood that we might be saved and that we might come to the knowledge of the truth. Give us a mind to seek you out as never before in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this ministry that we we're continuing on even in this virtual space that we're able to share your word uh, father over the internet we're able to share your word with our brothers and sisters that and when they log in and they listen to your word today that they might be encouraged today many of us are struggling oh God in the mighty name of Jesus but we realize that you're able to keep us from falling and bring us to the place where you would have us to be we give you all the glory the honor and the praise in Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.